The springs on the rope assembly are originally stretched one foot when P is equal to zero degrees. Determine the vertical force F that must be applied so that P is equal to 30 degrees. Okay, well the first thing we need to do is to find out what is the uh, change in length in uh, the spring. Well, we already know that there is one foot uh, increase in the length, okay? But as this thing displaces downward, as we go from zero degrees here to 30 degrees, part of the rope on this side is going to, of course, come on the, uh, the middle portion, okay? So we need to find out that uh, what is the increase in length uh, between A and B here, all right? So originally, the segment AB, now remember, the rope is initially horizontal, then we stretch it 30 degrees, okay? So originally, this is two feet long, and when it moves down here, what is the new length in this rope? Okay, so that's going to be the additional um, displacement that the spring is going to feel, okay? So we're going to use the cosine function here in order to solve for this new length of AB. Okay, so looking at that segment AB, originally it's two feet horizontally, and then it's going to displace downward, and then we have a 30 degree angle right here. Okay, and we want to find out what this length here is. Again, originally it was two feet. Okay, so the cosine of 30 degrees is equal to two, two feet over the hypotenuse L. So if we solve for L, we get 2.31 feet. Okay. So it didn't stretch 2.31 feet, right? Originally it was 2 feet, and now it's 2.31. So this spring has actually had a net increase in, in length over here of 0.31, okay? So the net length, okay? So I'll just write maybe net L is equal to 2.31 minus 2, or 0. 3, 1. All right, well, we need to find what is the force inside each of these springs. So just recall from physics that force in a spring is equal to the spring constant K times its displacement. All right, and the spring constant is given right here is 30 pounds per foot. Okay, times how many feet that it displaces. Well, we have two displacements here. We have one foot that we need to worry about, given in the question. And then it has an additional 0 0.31 as we add the, uh, at the angle here of 30 degrees. Okay, so that works out to be 39.3 pounds. All right, now that we have that part, we can go ahead and start doing some statics. I'm going to solve this problem two different ways. Okay, so method one. All right, well, method one, I'm going to use the forced uh, triangle technique. So I'm going to take these uh, three forces that are acting at A, right? There's the force P at A, and of course, the two forces in the wire, okay? So we have that P coming down at A. Then we have a force in one wire. And then we have a force in the other wire. Okay, and the force in each of these two wires is 39.3, right, because of symmetry. And we know the angle 
happens to be 30 degrees from a horizontal reference. Okay, so here is that 30 degrees. Here is the other 30 degrees, right? So looking at each one of these separately, see how this one's tilted up 39.3, um, and this one is also tilted 39.3. Uh, or I'm sorry, this is tilted 30 degrees, and this one's uh, tilted 30 degrees as well from the horizontal. Okay. Well, now we have... Um, now this is not a right triangle, so don't use you know sine and cosine, but we can use the law of sines or the law of cosines because there is no 90 degree angle here. I'm going to go ahead and use the law of cosines here. Okay, and. Basically, the log cosine works well here because we know two sides and we know the angle between them. So then we can solve for the third side. Okay, so we have p squared is equal to the two other sides squared. So 39.3 squared plus 39.3 squared minus two times the two sides, well, 39.3, also times 39.3, times the cosine of the angle between those two, which in this case is 30 plus 30, or 60 degrees. Okay, and solving for P, we get 39.3. So, kind of a coincidence that everything here is 39.3. Okay, so that's uh, method one. Now let's do that this problem again using another technique. So in this particular case, I'm just going to use statics, summation of the forces x and summation of the forces y. All right, here's our free body diagram again. All right, we have P coming down, and we have our two forces. Thirty-nine point three again, and thirty-nine point three. Well. We could do summation of forces in the x, but of course you can see that doesn't get us anything. Uh, so let's go ahead and try summation of forces in the y. Well, basically, right, each of these two forces here have two components. And of course we have symmetry here, so all the components are actually the same. But let's do summation of the forces in the y. Okay, and so we're going to take this component right here, which, again, remember this angle here is 30 degrees. Let's just pencil that in. And it's the same thing on the other side. Okay, so we have 39.3 times the sine of 30. And, of course, that's t times 2 because of the two sides. And then we have P going down. Solving for P, we get 39.3 pounds.